welcome to Love for the Truth Radio, a program devoted to encouraging you to be a contender of the faith in an ever-changing church culture. On Love for the Truth Radio, we will discuss current issues and challenging views along with biblical truth that can affect our Christian worldview and how we live out our faith. And now, here's your host, Cindy Hartline. Welcome to the program. Well, if you haven't noticed, interfaithism is on the rise and being more accepted by our societies and church culture. Interfaithism is the belief that all faiths must coexist to gain peace and harmony. It also sets the stage for a one world faith and one world order. There are many institutions, conferences, and conventions that promote interfaithism, one being the Parliament of the World's Religions. Well, our guest today, Jackie Alnor, who has recently attended a Parliament convention, is here to tell us all about it and how influential these conventions are and their purposeful agendas. Jackie Alnor is a veteran Christian, author, watchman, researcher, journalist, and currently the director of the Rapture Ready radio network on Blog Talk Radio, where she hosts a weekly show called The Scattered Sheep Report. Jackie is also the author of the book, The Fleecing of Christianity, that tracks the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist in the church via televangelism. We have a program discussing her book in the archives on our website, so check it out, lovefortruthradio.com. That's lovefortruthradio.com. It's called Apostasy. You may want to listen to that show as well. Her years of taping Christian television and documenting the errors of the Word of Faith movement culminated in her 1990 video, The Great Apostasy, The Lost Sign, and that can be found on the YouTube channel. Welcome, Jackie Elnor. It's a pleasure to have you back on Love for the Truth Radio. Great to be on with you, Cindy. Jackie, uh, you just recently attended the Parliament of World Religions, uh, that convention. Why don't you tell us about it? You know, tell us where it was held, where it took place, and whatnot. Give us all the details. Well, you know, it was held at the big convention center center in Salt Lake City. It's called the Salt Palace. I had never been there before, though I'd seen it from the outside. It's just right down the street from Salt Lake City Mormon Temple, hmm. which, you know, was a strange backdrop for such a such an event. Yes. And um but, you know, the the Parliament of World Religions has been around well, you know, they had their first one in the late 1800s, what was that, about, oh, what was it, 1893 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yet they went 100 years without having another one. And I guess the next one was probably the one in, um, oh, about 1983 in, well, so it wasn't quite... It wasn't quite a hundred years, but I believe that one was in Chicago. I was aware of it because I was pretty much at that time uh, go. I was all going to Walter Mart the late Walter Martin's Bible studies, and and was associated with CRI back then. And a couple of the researchers got to go, and uh, you know came back kind of with the same impression I was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know this is um, this is just amazing that there's there's people who really, uh, all the cults, and of course, you know, Dr. Martin wrote The Kingdom of the Cults, and so to study all the cults and to know all of the things that they teach and to somehow see them all wanting to come together and to become as one, mm. as they put it, um, is, is really is really amazing for, you know, for especially, you know, even with my background, because I started out doing cult apologetics in, in the 1980s and reaching out to Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and, oh, Moonies and the like, you know. Yes, but yeah. for But for all the cults to want to acknowledge one another and um, and say and try to acknowledge each other's that everybody has a little bit of the truth and no one has a market on the truth mm -hmm. it, um, it it's a, it's an amazing thing that today more so than it was 30 years ago you know when they had that one in Chicago that um, that that today it's it's the typical um, worldview at least of, of most Americans. Well, I, I can't say most because I haven't taken a poll, mm -hmm. but there is this trend, you know, towards their their ideas of, of bringing all religions together in order to bring in peace, harmony, and 
you know, and, and the new age, basically. basically. Yeah. yeah, and it seems like they have an agenda behind it. Um, in case anyone is wondering when it took place, it took place, I think it was October 15th through 19th, right, Jackie? At uh, the Salt, yes, yes. Salt Palace. Yes, it was, just a, it was just a week ago. It's just a week, so hey, in, this is all new. Yes. And uh, how many attended that, that con- convention? Well, you know, I when I got there, I asked them how many. They had 12,000 that were already pre-registered. Mm-hmm. And so I had heard many word numbers between 12,000 and 14,000, mm-hmm. uh, which was, was, you know, the, the thing is, it was very expensive to attend, although I didn't pay. I... Me and uh, another associate, associate from my ministry, mm-hmm. Ray Youngin, um, he, uh, we got in under press passes, so we didn't have to pay. Mm-hmm. But it was $500 if you ordered it ahead, but if you bought it at the door, it was $550. Oh, so that, that tells you something. It was an awful lot of money. It is an awful lot. And you know, people that will pay that amount of money, it means that they'll sacrifice for it and that they're really into it, and they probably get a lot of leaders there. You know, the parliament, uh, for, your, for the listeners, is the oldest and the largest and the most inclusive gathering people of all faith and traditions for a common purpose. Uh, the first parliament actually took place in 1893, like Jackie was saying, and since this historic event has taken place in Chicago, as she mentioned, uh, in S- South Africa and Barcelona, Spain, uh, Melbourne, Australia, and of course the late Salt Lake City, Utah. Jackie, what was one of the main common purposes of this event? I know we had talked well, about that. Well, you know, they had this theme. The theme, and, and I want to correct myself. It was 1993 that 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 uh, they had the um, the one with um, with the with the, that they had the one in Chicago. Okay. It was in '93, and at that time, my my late husband was uh, the was was you know was involved with the CRI at that okay. time. He was mm-hmm. the news editor of the journal, and so you know, it's funny. Gosh. When you start going so far back, you start mixing up which which errors of yeah, everything. Yeah, which errors? Especially when Walter Martin died in eighty nine. <laughs> he wasn't right. alive then, but right. at the at the same time, it was still we were still somewhat associated with CRI at that time. Mm-hmm. But the Parliament, the uh, the subtitle of this, it or the title of it is "Reclaiming the Heart of Our Humanity: mm-hmm. Working Together for a World of Compassion, Peace, Justice, and Sustainability." And so, um, so, so thinking as far as what they mean by that, that's, um, well, they, <laughs> that, that's another story. Now, they handed out a almost 400 page, uh, program for this. And there is a note here from the, um, oh, this is from the, the process committee. And they say, I can read this sentence. It would kind of say it all. Mm -hmm. We gather at a unique moment in history when movements are converging, when we are realizing that the underlying commonalities, the shared ground of our human experience, Mm -hmm. have a common origin and a shared future. Right. So basically, they say we encourage you to, uh, to take time for stillness, to listen to your own heartbeat, to listen to the heartbeat of this parliament, to listen to the heartbeat of our earth. Mm-hmm. And now when I first walked in there, there was this big, what they call the indigenous spiritual people, the, the Indians, they had out in the quad there, they had a teepee set up, oh, and they were, were doing, uh, all the Indians with their paint and feathers and everything were doing a, a dance with the funny music and all of that, and oh, everybody was, you know, going over to that section just to, just to watch them and everywhere you looked as you walked in the place was people in all kinds of outfits like you wouldn't believe i never saw so many shades of red and orange mm. i don't know why red and orange seem to be the uh, the colors for some especially eastern religions mm-hmm. yeah. and um and different different types of of oh, bald heads and some half shaved heads and and the and the variety of hats you wouldn't believe mm-hmm. it, it was quite a spectacle I I guess that's what mm-hmm. you would say and then and then underlying as wherever you walked around in this huge facility I mean giant I've never seen a convention center mm-hmm. that big and I've been to some of the biggest convention centers you know Anaheim Convention Center uh, I've been to one in Washington D.C. and all over the place. Uh, 
it's almost the biggest one I ever went to. Well, um, <laughs> there was one I attended in in uh, New Orleans at the uh, at, at at the big stadium there. Now that was bigger, but this was pretty big. But you could hear different sounds of there was little groups of people singing or uh, someone. One group was even singing. Um, you know, we are family. You know, yes. But you, but you see that that basically is the theme is that since you know all of us are humans, then we all are children of God. Mm-hmm. You don't have to in that viewpoint. Mm-hmm. You, you know, to be a child of God, you naturally are one, and that was kind of the. A, a typical doctrine that they all pretty much share is that everybody has divine within. Yes. So it sounds like a, a new age type of philosophy under the guise of love, justice, global socialism, social justice kind of thing. Uh, we had Carl Tycrib on the on the program, and he talked about the transformational festivals, and he said basically the same thing. There was a lot of garb, a lot of dancing, uh, a lot of worshipful type of uh practices going on and and meanwhile that that the color orange actually is the color of praise in case anyone wants to know and red is often used <laughs> to uh, to promote something so i don't know if that has anything to do with these but anyway jackie there's a, another agenda a real agenda uh, that they have that uh, for all faces they gather together um what were some of the other agendas that you saw happening there okay well you know you hear a lot of stuff from them about the redistribution of wealth, and they can all they all call, also call that income inequality, mm. and um, you know they they uh, they really sound like they are the extreme leftist sort of party line, mm-hmm. like you know you would hear a lot of people slamming Tea Partiers and Republicans and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, so it's really a, a leftist movement, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, and, and it's it's the whole idea of being tolerant. Yeah. You know, they want people to be tolerant, and those who claim that their way is the only way. In other words, if Jesus, if you say Jesus is the only way, that makes you intolerant, mm. and they, you know, they don't want to accept that because they want you to say that everybody is equally right as you are. It's it's really. Um, you know, there's no black and white in their worldview, mm-hmm. and and pretty much all of them. And when you look at the diversity of these people, from spiritists to to people following UFOs, to theosophists, yeah. to every every cult and, and thing imaginable, and to emergent Christianity, because <clears throat> the only well, there were also some. Uh, some Anglicans and and some of the more liberal so-called Christians, like those from the United Church of of Christ, mm. with their horrible liberal agenda. But everybody there was a total liberal, mm. and they're assuming that that if you're a conservative, then you're then then, then you're the enemy. Yeah. You see, yeah. So and, we have this leftism going on, and they say that they that all the faiths are coming together, and that they do have to unite under a common way of thinking. But this common way of thinking really has nothing to do with faith. It's really either a leftist kind of movement or a liberation theology. Would you say that? Well, yes, because okay. um, it's very socialistic, mm-hmm. and they they want to get rid of borders. Uh, this one person made the statement that, the, in fact, he was a so-called Christian, that nobody can call themselves a Christian if they want to close the borders to the refugees or the immigrants seeking a better way of life, that call yourself a Christian. We're going on a break. We'll be back with Jackie Alnor to talk about this Parliament of World Religions, its influence, and how it's changing the minds of many. So please stay tuned. You're listening to Love for the Truth Radio. We'll be right back, so please stay tuned. If you're a first-time listener, you'll find that on Love for the Truth Radio, we discuss news and views from a biblical worldview. We believe that the Bible is the inerrant Word of God, and the absolute truth that should be applied to every aspect of life. 
We don't proclaim to have a cap on the truth, but we do have a love for biblical truth. So please, take everything you hear on this radio program to study and prayer, and thank you for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. If you just tuned in, our guest is Jackie Alnor, author, watchman, researcher, journalist, and the host of the Scattered Sheep Report on the Rapture Ready Radio Network on Blog Talk Radio, so be sure to check that out. Uh, Jackie, I, I looked up the Parliament Convention and read on their website that if you were concerned or cared about or troubled by a particular criteria, the Parliament is for you. And these were the, uh, the ifs that they put on their website. If you are concerned about war, terrorism, and hatred, if you care for creation and are worried about climate change, if you are troubled by the widening wealth gap and wasteful consumption, if you care for religions and nations working together in harmony for the good of humanity, then this is for you. Uh, I believe most of us, Jackie, would have some care and concern about those areas. However, it sounds like there is an agenda behind these somewhat questions. We talked about that uh, in the last segment. Uh, the words are the same. However, the meaning behind them are different. Uh, you know, when they say care for religions and nations, let's say working together, they're talking about something other other than uh, we would talk about as Christians. And Jackie, you said in our previous conversation that the parliament is a convention of thieves and robbers with a different renditions of Jesus. Can you elaborate on what you meant when you told me that? Well, yes, because just about any time they mention the, the name Jesus, they just see Jesus as one of many religious leaders, and, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and some of them even see him as an ascended master or, uh, you know, different renditions of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of their ideas that they have about Jesus came through channelers and, mm. uh, you know, people who supposedly had visions of Jesus during their time of, of um, going into their, you know, to reaching their higher self through their meditative states. And so this Jesus that they are talking about isn't the Jesus of the Bible. Mm -hmm. They may quote him, and when they do, they quote him out of context or totally put us different spin and a whole different meaning on what he said mm. uh, than, than the obvious obvious in context of what he meant and um you know and so 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 they like jesus in fact somebody has oh i hate christians but i like jesus yeah. you, you hear a lot of that kind of uh, talk at the place you know by um different people who you know are are you know wanting to communicate with Christians. And so, you know, I, I've talked to some of the people who had a book on, supposedly on, about Jesus, but they were the Urantia cult. Jackie, so uh, what is the spiritual agenda then that Christians should be aware of? Well, I think Christians really need to ignore the kind of hype and rhetoric that you might hear from people that would associate with the parliament to, t to try to convince us mm -hmm. that we are the ones that are intolerant for, you know, for claiming that Jesus is the only way, that uh, Christians shouldn't believe the uh, accusation made against us, that we are unloving and hateful mm -hmm. because we say that that. Um, other religions are false, and or, God forbid, we say anybody is headed to hell. If you tell somebody they're on the road to destruction with, with the stuff that they are following, mm. even though it's true, you are a meanie yeah. to even say that. And so, you know, Christians, certainly we have to speak the truth in love, but we still have to speak the truth. We can't uh, bow to them like they love to bow to one another and mm -hmm. say that namaste or however they however they say that when yeah. they bow to each other and they're bowing to the bowing to the god in each other you know we're not going to go along with that mm -hmm. and yet we're 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 labeled hateful for not going along with them and we shouldn't let that stop us from proclaiming the gospel mm -hmm. and that Jesus is the door and you know as was mentioned before, yes. anyone coming in any other way is a thief and a robber. Only he is the door. Yeah. This group was all is all people on that broad road, and Jesus said, many are they that go on it, That's but right. the way to life is narrow and small is the gate, and few there are that find it. And That's right. so, 
you know, for us to say we're among those few, they, they think that that's cruel and evil of us to say, but don't buy it. Mm. Yeah, and you mentioned about Taoism. Is that how you say Taoism and pantheonism that it, that they seem to be practicing there? Why don't you explain to our audience what, what uh, that means as far as uh, practices or beliefs? Well, you know, all through the place, there was all kinds of spiritual um, rituals going on mm-hmm. with um, things like, you know, oh, like Reiki and things like that. And, and and people seem to think they have some sort of spiritual energies that they can pass on to each other. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you know, that they can impart spirits or impart power or impart energy. And so you d- there's different places as you were walking around, you would see people on the side with the, uh, the subject closing their eyes and them putting their hands near them and, mm. and saying incantations and chanting at them and somehow passing along spirits. Wow. And, uh, and you could really d- dis- discern evil spirits just they they were they were just running amok in that place that so many people brought so many demons together there but oh wouldn't we be if we pointed out the fact that they were entertaining evil spirits yeah again we would be the intolerant bad people for saying that right now of course, the whole idea of pantheism is that is that everything is a part of God, and and, and there is no uh, God is not um, you know the, the creator it is the the Bible says that the creation cannot contain Him, but but the the view of all these Eastern religions and everything is that everything is a part of God, including you, mm-hmm. including the animals, including the water and the trees. And and the earth, you know, which is the you know Gaia, the mm-hmm. the the earth itself is alive, and that everything in the universe is alive and and a part of uh, part of each other, and the whole thing made up together is God. Well, God is not His creation, and so um, the whole pantheistic idea that He is, and that each of us are like a cell within God, yeah. and there's divine within every one of us, including the animals. That's uh, that that is a very common uh, uh, doctrine of demons that was very much every everyone there seemed to be you know to have some sort of form of that Mm -hmm. yeah so we see this parliament of the world religions uh kind of emerging into this a new age type of philosophy and trying to embrace all different types of faiths but we know as christians we can't have any part in uh or, or have any kind of same mind or same spirit with those that practice such things you know jackie i was amazed when you told me that there when i had asked you what was the most pertinent information that you wanted our listeners to know, and you told me. Why don't you uh, share that with the listening audience? Oh, as far as well, the the most <laughs> I have to look at my notes. Um, well, there was a supreme leader that they all seem to look up to. Oh, oh, well, yes, because wherever you went, mm-hmm. there were two names that were dropped by just about every one of the speakers. If they didn't drop one, they dropped the other. But the biggest name dropped mm-hmm. was Pope Francis. Amazing. In fact, when they handed out our, you get this little bunch of little literature and everything mm-hmm. when they when you um, pick up your name tag. When and one of the things that they gave out is called. On care, on care for our common home by Pope Francis. So everybody kept saying, talking about Pope Francis. He was just absolutely held up as like the poster child of the whole Parliament. And he did give. I didn't see it, but but I could see in the uh, program that he did give a gave a taped message. I'll have to see if it does make it onto YouTube. Mm-hmm. But he uh, he had this prayer for the earth that um, he has for everybody to recite. And so that was included in the packet. Mm. So everybody has to have this new prayer written by Pope Francis that he uh, wrote in his encyclical on the earth. Mm. Yeah, and we know that Pope Francis is a very liberal pope. I know even a lot of the Catholics are against him. And he's the first Jesuit pope, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. Uh, You know... (laughs) 
Jackie, you had mentioned, I think, in the first segment that there's this need for justice, love, and harmony, harmony and it, very similar to the hippie movement, you know, uh, that uh, they, they're moving towards a light, and they're involved in this soaking prayer and all kinds of weird uh, meditations. Why don't we talk about that real quick? Uh, you had mentioned the practices of certain meditations, and I have to say that some of these meditations have come right into the Christian church, so we have to be aware of that. Yes, you know, one one name that kept coming up again mm-hmm. was Thomas Merton. Mm. And, um, you know, there was, you know, Thomas Merton is the, is the one who learned from Zen Buddhists and Hindus mm-hmm. how to meditate. And he was a Trappist monk who died in the 1960s. But his name kept coming up. And so they really pointed to to meditation and contemplative prayer as the common ground that they had with Christians, thanks to people like Merton. Mm. And, and you know, when the hippie movement, when I, I, there's just, I don't know if it's just in, in the culture or just at the, at the parliament, where people were wearing bell bottoms and tie-dye shirts and mm. um, love beads and wearing, uh, you know, the, the peace sign, the peace symbol, and taking pictures, holding up the two-finger peace salute that we used to do in the 60s, mm. and just the, the kind of music, you know, like 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 the um, oh the, the instrument that Rav, Ravi Shankar used to um, uh, play on some of the Beatles albums. Mm-hmm. It's sitar, and, um, Jackie. I think it's uh, sitar. You know, so, so, yeah. so that was happening a lot while while we were there. Yeah. where you could just see it looked like a lot of people who were you know I hate to say it, but my age who were you know involved in the hippie movement, mm-hmm. and it's just come full circle. Yeah. So uh, just real quickly, we didn't talk about this, Jackie, but who's behind this? Who's behind this, uh, this agenda or, or this, uh, con- um, I meant the convention? Well, you know, that's, that's a mystery. I hadn't been to one before. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, the, uh, the program gives like what their vision is and yeah. stuff like that. And, and they do show that um, one of the founding members of the one from from 1993 was the Dalai Lama. Mm. So uh, the the Dalai Lama was at the one in 93, and he just again gave a, um, he didn't attend this one, but he gave a uh, a taped message and a greeting. But back in the 93 one, the uh, theologian Hans Kuhn, who was quite the liberal theologian and some would even say heretic mm. uh was was there so you know as far as you know being behind it you know it just seems like the uh you know if if a name would would that would come up i would say it's it over and over again in all of these has been the Dalai Lama. Mm, that's interesting. So we have these religions and nations that, that are coming together, and the way that they're coming together is an emergence of uh, different faiths that are coming together to create almost a new religion, the religion of leftism, the religion of liberalism and new age. We'll be right back with Jackie Elnor to talk about what's going on as far as this common good. Why are people of different faiths coming together? We'll talk about that. Many would agree that we are living in unprecedented times. Grave immorality is on the rise, as in the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. There are wars and rumors of wars as nations rise against nations. Prophecy is being fulfilled as the birth pangs become quicker and harder. These are the signs of the return of Jesus Christ. There is one sign often left untaught. Jesus also told the disciples in the Olivet Discourse to take heed that no man deceive you. This warning applies to us too. Deception has infiltrated the churches through many false teachings and movements making apostasy paramount. As contenders of the faith, we do our best to research and discuss these false teachings for you, the listener. Thank you 
for having a love for the truth. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline. Your host with us today is author, radio host, apologist Jackie Alnor, who attended the Convention of the Parliament of the World's Religions and is sharing her observations with us. The Parliament promotes interfaithism and is basically, which is basically an effort in working together for the common good. Now, we know it sounds great, the feeling of harmony, it's a type of utopia. However, we know biblically one has to put their doctrines and convictions aside to work with other faiths. And we know it's a road towards destruction, that wide road. You know, for this agenda to work, people have to be programmed or reprogrammed. I noticed that the parliament, uh, they there was a purposeful type of discipling. Those who be a part of their interfaith leftist liberal agenda that I've been talking about. The website even reads, the parliament is a great networking opportunity. 60% of attendees are well connected within the, quote, interfaith community. Uh, Jackie, uh, what um, what were some of the efforts in connecting uh, those agendas together? What did they do there to try to uh, connect the efforts in the same mindsets? Well, of course, there were, there were so many workshops that mm-hmm. uh, you couldn't, uh, of course, you couldn't attend them all because from, there were sometimes as many as 30, and you mm-hmm. had to choose just one of those 30 to attend. And uh, then there were the, that was during the day, and then in the evenings during the prime time, they had the plenary sessions with, you know, the more, the people that uh, were more famous or Mm -hmm. uh, that more people would want to listen to. But, you know, again, there, I could (laughs) go through this 400 page booklet of Mm -hmm. all the different uh, workshops that they had. I tended to go to the ones that had, some sort of uh, Christian viewpoint. Yes. There was one that, you know, was kind of disturbing that I attended, and it was titled Charismatic Christianity in Latin America. Mm. And, yeah. um, and and this, this, this presenter, uh, who was a, well, I guess he was some sort of, um, you know, so-called Christian, but, uh, you know, not, not a well-known guy, but he was a a liberal Lutheran, he was talking about the problems in Brazil and in Latin America that among Roman Catholics that they were losing two million Catholics every year to the Pentecostal and charismatic churches down there. And so, I mean, here they are saying that they want to unify all religions, and yet they were pretty much um, showing charismatic and Pentecostal Christians as a threat mm. to the Roman Catholic Church because they were stealing people away. And I mean, he went through this whole history about uh, the missionaries in Brazil in, and the Assemblies of God. He mentioned that, um, mm. that uh, you know, that they were, they were really working hard with missionaries going down there and, and robbing the Roman Catholic Church of their people. Wow. So, you know, so everything wasn't all so positive. Now there was, um, you know, the, the big focus on on climate change, and so at one of the plenary sessions, Al Gore, the daughter, hosted it, and mm-hmm. Al Gore himself came through on the big screen, you know, telling mm-hmm. everybody about, he wouldn't use the word climate change, he still insists on using the word uh, Glo- global, global warming. warming. <laughs> so. He yeah. was asking all of you wonderful people and all your your religions, you know, you, we're, we can all unite and, and clean up this planet and stop the, uh, you know, the encroachment of, of uh, you know, global warming and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So they had a whole list of different people who were going to get up and speak like for 10 minutes. And Al Gore's daughter, who is, you know, seemed like a very nice lady, you know, and very well spoken. She introduced everybody. But, you know, the one speaker of the, that had their little 10 minutes that got the biggest reaction, at least, you know, be, as he was coming out, mm-hmm. was emergent leader Brian McLaren. Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, Brian McLaren is probably the daddy of the emergent church mm-hmm. uh, movement. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, it, in here, in they have his little bio here, and talk about all his different books that he wrote. One of the books he wrote is, Why Did Jesus, Moses, the Buddha, and Mohammed Cross the Road? Mm. Well, you know, those kinds of, of yeah. titles that get people's attention. And, and, and his book called it A Generous Orthodoxy, they, they you know, they puffed that up too, and of mm-hmm. course, a generous orthodoxy means 
everybody's orthodox except for people who say some aren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so he kind of made little little backhanded stabs at 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 you know traditional Christianity, historical Christianity that it really has to change, and and you and you can't get you know keep going on the stories of the old, almost like. Like he was knocking the the Bible because those are old stories. We got to have new ones. Yes, and he's been saying that for years. Brian McLaren's been calling it the ancient way of thinking or the old way of biblical thinking. You know, Brian McLaren and Jim Wallace kind of fit right in there in their agendas because uh, they are about the emergence. You know, the emergent church on Brian McLaren's side and the and Jim Wallace, the emergence of all of the uh, faiths coming together. You know, uh, we've been talking about. Uh, the world uh, uh, interfaithism uh, in our previous uh, radio programs and how we have to come to a melting pot of interfaith to bring everyone into a same way of thinking when it comes to terrorism and hatred, climate change or global warming, as Jackie's been talking about, widening wealth, and all these religions and nations must work together to come to that. Uh, Jackie, you know, we think of someone like Brian McLaren, who is the, he was, I think, voted the most uh, popular evangelical in Time magazine years ago, uh, you know, try, representing the so-called Christians. Obviously, he's gone way off to the left. I would say he actually uh, is teaching leftism at this point. But, um, you know, what are your thoughts about, you know, seeing Brian McLaren uh, speaking with these, these people? Oh, I thought he fits right in. Yeah. Same with Jim Wallace. Yep. They have redefined the term evangelical. Yes, they There's have. nothing evangelical about them. No. Evangelical, doesn't that mean that you, uh, or shouldn't the, the, mm-hmm. the name mean that you're an evangelist? That's right. I mean, where do you get the, the, the term evangelical if mm-hmm. it isn't someone who wants to proclaim the truth of the gospel? Mm-hmm. And they have, they have no desire to do that. As a matter of fact, they tend to slam individual salvation in exchange for collective mm-hmm. salvation, like getting groups saved or, you know, nations, um, you know, that, that it's not it's not the individual, but it's the collective that matters. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we're talking about the speakers there. I was reading that the 2015 Parliament uh, speakers, they were supposedly world-class speakers. They comp- uh, comprised of noble peace uh uh, laureates such as uh, the top religious scholars, writers, speakers, activists, achieving compassion, peace, justice, sustainability, like we talked about. Uh, And they included pre-recorded message from, here we go, the Dalai Lama in the past, Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, Al Gore, and Brian McLaren and Jim Wallace, some of the people that you probably have heard, listeners. You know, we're seeing here that there's a mindset coming together. We know that Oprah Winfrey believes that there's many, many paths to God, and this is all fitting together. But let's look at this. You know, these doctrinal mindsets, uh, apparently they do not follow Jesus Christ and his gospel, and oftentimes uh, portray a different spirit. And Jackie, like you said, you got there, and there was a very, like, uh, uh, demonic kind of spirit there. Doctrines of demons. Um, in your discernment, what what was the different spirit there? Let's talk about that. Well, you know, it was, it was unclean spirits. That's mm-hmm. for sure. There was nothing mm-hmm. good about these spirits, right. and uh, you know, you could just he- feel the 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 darkness of the place, and you could see mm-hmm. the emptiness in people's eyes. Yeah. So you know, it was it was just not really good. And then, and then of course, they all. Um, flocked to to uh, see this uh, preview that they showed of the new show of Oprah Winfrey's called Belief. Yeah, and scary. she is promoting that as to find all this goodness in every sort of religion that you know that was pretty much represented at the at the parliament, and that we all should find some sort of good thing in everybody's religion. It's like we're going to a buffet to pick out exactly what we want to eat, you know. And this is what the Bible talks about, having tickling ears, folks. You know, just uh, deciding what we want to hear 
and what we want to believe in. And that's exactly what this parliament convention is all about. This is the age or the spirit of the age right now is the Antichrist. We're going to talk a lot about that in the next segment. But this is what the stage is being set for. We had Carl Tycrib on. We talked about the transformational festivals. Same exact thing was going on there, except they went into more of the spiritual thing and channeling and all that kind of stuff. But it's the same thing. You know, they have these costumes and this certain type of praise and this type of worship and this new age. We're part of the world, part of the cosmos. Uh, we're part of the earth and everyone is one. And let's all be the melting pot of religions so we can come out on the other end. And I would say of a new religion, a religion of compromise, tolerance, liberalism, leftism. It's all, all will end up in the same mindset. We're seeing that today in our culture and we're wondering what the heck is going on. Well, what's going on is that we have a lot of these conventions uh, that are out there that are transforming the mind of our people, many people, not only the young people. Um, and, and Jackie, you know, Basically, what I'm talking about is there's a mindset here that seems to be entering the churches today. And we talked a little bit about before about meditation type prayers, but what are some of those prayer or those meditations that have entered the church today that are very dangerous? That they use well, in these you know, a term that they use for it is soaking prayer. Uh -huh. And that became very popularized by John Arnott and the whole so-called Toronto blessing, mm -hmm. where they were trying to conjure up God because they want to get his presence. And so the teaching, which did, again, come through the, the desert fathers of the monks of the Catholic Church, and then on down to, um, to through Thomas Merton and people like Richard Rohr, I, I don't need to throw all those names up there, it wouldn't make a lot of sense, but mm -hmm. it's basically finding a Christian mantra to repeat over and over again and to make your mind a blank so that you can somehow hear God speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's dangerous because talking to Ray Young, and we had him on the show too, he was talking about when you get into that kind of place where you empty up your mind it really opens up for demons to come on inside and to, to even a type of possession they're like people are channeling and having spirit guides when they do those kind of things and here here's a convention that's saying we all want to get come together for the common good so we can take care of the widening of wealth and helping people and the climate change and terrorism and hatred and all that and we can only do that if we all think alike or we're on the same page and god forbid if we think something else you know jackie i want to talk Talk about terrorism and hatred because that was one of their points, you know. Um, when we think of terrorism and hatred, we think of it one way, but they see it another. How do they see it? Well, they see that as the result of anyone who is an extreme in their religion. Whatever religion you're a part of, if you're an extremist, if, if you take your religion to heart, too literally. And so when, you know, when the terrorists are talking jihad and going to kill people, they compare that to um, to the to Christians saying that someone is going to uh, burn forever in hell. That that we are just equal to them to tell people that when they die they're going to hell. That that is just as violent as what these uh, suicide bombers are doing. In Second Timothy chapter three, we read that men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, without self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. They will be ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for having a love for the truth. Welcome back. I'm Cindy Hartline, your host for Love of the Truth program here. We are uh, continuing our discussion on the Parliament Convention with Jackie Alnar. Check out her Scattered Sheep broadcast on Blog Talk Radio on the Rapture Ready channel or network. And in this segment, we will be discussing how the Parliament promotes 
paganism, which is the spirit of the Antichrist, setting the stage for the one world order. Uh, I've been talking a lot about that lately. Uh, John Haller has been on talking about leftism and how that moves right into paganism thought. It's something that the Lord did not want the Israelites to be a part of, and that's exactly where we seem to be moving again, just like the days of Lot, the days of Noah. Uh, we just seem to be moving back in that direction. We're seeing the stage being set. So, uh, Jackie, in our last uh, conversation, we talked about the rebellion of the 60s, the hippie movement. I know we spoke a little bit about that before, but how is this movement playing out in the parliament? Uh, you mentioned you saw people dressed funny, but let's talk about the movement in and of itself. It seemed like it was the movement that uh, that pushed America uh, towards the new age type of thinking we had uh, i think at the i mentioned to you that we had the beatles coming in and and uh, i know that john lennon was into new age and george harrison worshiped harry krishner and then a lot of their music came in so we know part of that movement a lot of this same type of mindset uh moved right into our culture Certainly, and a lot of it was through the music. Mm -hmm. Remember uh, the Fifth Dimension song, This is the Dawning of the Age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. and, and then there was the Broadway musical Hair. Hair had um, a lot of, of songs that, uh, you know, within, within the musical that mm -hmm. really talked about, um, you know, man being, this is the time of man uh, coming to his you know, his greatest uh, evolution. Mm. And, and so certainly this is the kind of thing that, there, that the New Age movement, I don't know if you've heard of the 100th monkey mm. idea. Have no. you heard of hundred, the 100th monkey no, before? No, no, that's a new one for me. <laughs> okay, well, back, well, well, see, when the New Age movement was really getting big in the late 70s and the 80s, there was this idea that was bandied about back then about about supposedly, and, I, and you know, it was from some book, but I can't tell you the name of the book, that, that you could find or come to the place where there would be the critical mass that, Pete, that we would take our next evolutionary step of mm. mankind. Okay. And so this was the new age that they were looking for. They were, you know, uh, really, which is a counterfeit of the coming millennial kingdom. Mm. So in order t for the hundredth monkey, if you had, they talked about a whole bunch of monkeys that would would take their, they were on this island, and they kept eating dates or nuts or whatever they were, and pretty soon one monkey started washing the date before he would eat it. He, at the side of the river, he'd wash it, and then another monkey would see him, and then he'd wash his date before, um, you know, before the uh, before he ate it, and then pretty soon 10, 20 monkeys started imitating those monkeys, <laughs> and by the time the hundredth monkey saw the other monkeys doing it and did it, then there was this evolutionary leap, and the monkeys all around the world started washing their food before they ate it, mm -hmm. and, oh, I, and so that was the critical mass, you know, and, okay. and it, then it was exemplified by the hundredth monkey. So if we as mankind start thinking and concentrating on peace, remember things like Hands Across America oh, yeah. and, or the song We Are the World, yes, absolutely. you would have everybody doing that, um, thinking that at the same time and when mm -hmm. enough of humanity could think those peaceful thoughts of each other and the oneness of man all at the same time, then the paradigm shift would then happen and then everybody all the rest of humanity would think that way as well. Mm -hmm. And then that would be the next step forward in our evolution. Yeah, yeah, and I think we're in that evolution right now. I mean, and as far as mindsets, uh, you know, and I know we didn't talk about this, but just as you were you were saying uh, about, you know, the Hands Across America, I think I was young when we participated in that. It, it kind of has a great feeling of like a utopia. Oh, this is wonderful. We're all connecting. We're all being one. Doesn't everyone want that? In fact, everyone wants fellowship today. We can't find fellowship sometimes, even in churches. It's hard to find people today that 
think alike and, and are on the same page or of the same spirit. It just seems like spiritually uh, there, there's something so profound happening now. You can almost see the separation, uh, you know, as I believe that the Lord will return soon. So we're starting to see that maybe the wheat and the tares and the, you know, the goats and the sheep kind of thought, you know, where it's hard to interact and hard to have a community, hard to have a fellowship with people that are not of the same mind. You know, Jackie, I think of this almost as the Tower of Babel, and I think you and I talked about this. I think we did, or was that John Heller? That, you know, it's the same thing, uh, you know, back in the Garden of Eden. We keep going back there. It's the same thing what Satan did back then. He twists the words ever so slightly, you know, and then, of course, uh, Eve fell prey to to the enemy, to Satan, and, and then mm-hmm. sin came in. And, of course, sin leads to destruction. And it seems like that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking little bits of words, you know, from this, from our religion and some other religion and this religion and putting it together, merging together, coming up with a different spirit, talking about Jesus, coming up with a different Jesus kind of thing. And we're basically they're building a uh, mindset or like a Tower of Babel to make a name for itself. That's how I see it. Uh, how do you see it? Well, you know, that's pretty much the, you said it like it is. Mm-hmm. It's called the harmonic convergence. Okay. Remember, uh, in fact, they had this big, this big mm-hmm. thing that was uh, August 16th, 1987, called the harmonic convergence. Now, mm-hmm. the reason I remember that date, it was my wedding date. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and, and then, and so all the new agers and everybody was promoting this, this harmonic mm-hmm. convergence where everybody was getting together with all these different festivals and all thinking everybody was supposed to on that date, mm-hmm. that August 16th date, everybody was supposed to have these, these higher thoughts of peace and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but certainly spiritually, the battle lines are being drawn. People are are saying, okay, I'm going to be with the Lord, you know, we're going to be with Him, and we're going to take our stand with Him, or, you know, they'll go to the other side. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the the uh, the ones the, who are excluded from their inclusiveness, we are the ones excluded because we exclude ourselves yes. because of our insistence that Jesus is the door, yes. and uh, there's no other way. So certainly people are choosing now which side they're going to stand on mm-hmm. because the final stand is about to take place. Yes, it is. And I think persecution, we see persecution happening all around the world. People are getting a little bit afraid. Look what happened in, in the school uh, where where the young people said they were Christians got shot in the head. You know, there's maybe there's going to be a time maybe that we have to stand up for our faith and are we going to do it? But I guess if we, all this influence around us, uh, like the parliament, the trans transformational festivals, all these different types of uh, movements and, uh, you know, whatever that's coming in, trying to change the minds of the people. You know, I see a lot of this in universities. Uh, They're teaching a lot about uh, political correctness and leftism and thinking a certain way. And uh, we have a whole generation that will be coming out of these universities thinking that way. And uh, I think that's, I think we're going to be in trouble. Uh, what about the religious leaders educating towards uh, the same kind of mindset? Do you see this uh, connected with, I keep saying leftism, do you see connecting with socialism and uh, well, Marxism? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, the the uh, the ideas of people like Rick Warren and mm-hmm. Tony um, Tony Blair, oh, Tony Blair, yeah, Tony Blair, the mm-hmm. the Faith Foundation, yes, and uh, all of these guys who are you know wanting to bring about this uh, you know this peace and harmony by joining with other religions, mm-hmm. and uh, you know one of the things that was that uh, people were signing right at the entrance to where all of the booths were with, all, with everybody with their booths. There was this table where people were lining up, signing this petition, asking the United Nations to open up a religious arm of the United Nations. Mm-hmm. And everybody was, they had so many signatures, and then even they had other people walking around trying to get you to sign the petition. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
you know, and, and this is the kind of thing that's right in line with Rick Warren's peace plan. Yeah. And with the Faith Foundation of, of Tony Blair, where everybody has to agree to um, acknowledge other people's religions and to mm-hmm. say that humanity, the brotherhood of man, that everybody is one and, uh, you know, each person's truth is as good as another person's truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's where post uh, uh, modernism comes in, you know, with that postmodern thought that says your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth, let's put our doctrines aside, let's all get along. We see this in a lot of religions today. I mean, uh, look at the Word of Faith movement, you know. Uh, you know, when you think of that movement, they've got the same thing, you know, uh, basically, you know, thinking positive and uh, going towards maybe shamanism. I know I'm probably confusing my listeners right now, but um, we're seeing this convergence of getting away, if we can make it really easy to understand, we're getting away from the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's basically what it is. And by bringing in all these other faiths, it entices the people to come together, like this one big melting pot. And to, I, I feel like it's, like, again, birthing in a new kind of way of thinking Thinking. But it's amazing because you sit back and you say, how on earth is everyone going to start thinking the same, you know, when they come from all different areas? Well, I know. I know what it is. It's, it's, it's the same spirit. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. And that's what's happening right now. It's taking the place of Jesus Christ. And anything that takes the place of Jesus Christ is the Antichrist. And that's what we're, what, exactly what their intentions are, is to prepare for the coming of the Antichrist. I know you would agree with that. Do you have any thoughts on that, Jackie? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because we're really being prepared for his coming, for yeah. this uh, mm-hmm. uh, Antichrist to show up on the scene. There has to be a lot of preparation being made where people will be willing to accept this man. Mm-hmm. And they're going to also have to accept him as the as as a god because mm-hmm. all who take the mark are acknowledging that he is deity yes. and when they see uh, the divine as something that you can evolve into he's like the top of the evolutionary scale yes. and everybody has to accept him so all these ideas are being fed us we're we're being fed the belief that there are uh you know, other planets that are visit, you know, that are sending visitors, that people are waiting for the Space Brothers, and they're going to be able to help us on our evolutionary um, mm-hmm. movement forward so that we can be more spiritual people like them. Mm-hmm. So it's all being done in advance, and people like uh, Pope Francis and Oprah Winfrey, yes. they are major tools for advancing those kinds of ideas so that people will be ready to accept this world ruler that uh, so many of the religions, and they've pointed this out at the parliament, Mm -hmm. that they're all looking for a special world leader to show up on the scene. Mm -hmm. I heard many people mentioning that as well, and and, like that's a good thing, and they're all waiting for him. He's going to show up not in the sky, he's going to show up, you know, being born and and raised up in... uh, authority and power mm-hmm. we're going on a break we've had a wonderful conversation with jackie alnor we'll be right back to tell you how you can contact her personally so please stay tuned you're listening to love for the truth radio we'll be right back so please stay tuned I want to personally thank you for listening to Love for the Truth Radio. Please visit our website at www.lovefortheTruthRadio.com. That's www.lovefortheTruthRadio.com. Well, welcome back. We finished up our segment on the Convention of the Parliament of Worlds, Religions, and uh, people, I think you, Jackie really did a wonderful job in giving us all the information that she saw going on there, what it all means. Just keep your eyes open, keep your ears listening for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you into all truth and understanding. Jackie, what advice can we give to our friends today, our Christian friends that say, gee, you know, I, I you know, this is really bothering me. How do I talk to people that have been a part of this, or I hear this leftism going on and this tolerance going on, you know, what kind of advice can you give them? 
Well, really, they need to stay grounded in the Word because, uh, you know, the, the deceptions are going to get so much harder to see through the closer we get. And uh, they need to warn their friends about this stuff that's coming into the church. Most of those, a lot of the people, it's very hard to reach them. I can't give you any secrets on reaching these people who are that far into it. Mm -hmm. It's the ones who are walking on the line that I think that we can snatch out of the fire. Yes. And we have to watch out for stuff coming into the church, like the books uh, God Calling and Jesus Calling both came through extra-biblical revelation that contradict the Bible, and when that happens, test everything. Yes. And, uh, you know, don't don't fall into this stuff that people say they got some special word like that, you know, through, um, you know, through their meditation or after get, getting through soaking prayer and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't, you know, it, it, it doesn't do us any good at adding to the Word of God like that. That's right. And the, and the Lord tells us not to do that anyway. But how can someone contact you, Jack, in case they have questions? Uh, why don't you give us your information? Well, I think the best place is I'm very active on Facebook. Just look up my name, Jackie Alnor, and and send me a friend in, invite and uh, get in on the conversations that we have. Also, you could hear my my um, weekly report, the Scattered Cheap Report on RaptureReadyRadio.com, and uh, tune in there. And there's links there at Rapture Ready Radio to my um, to my Scattered Cheap blog. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, Jackie, it's been wonderful. Thank you again. We always like having you on the show. I know we'll have to do a part two on all of this. So take care. Uh, Listening audience, have a great week, and we'll be back next week. Thank you, Jackie. God bless.